I'm Cody Boyer in Ennis. How the future of the usage on the Madison River sits on a survey. Those trying to get a co-op grocery store opened here in Butte say it's a bit more challenging than they first thought. Theme for this next half hour is challenges <laughs> from the river and from the mining city. Cody and uh, John will have those stories coming up in just a moment. That's right. My challenge to you is there find you better go. temperatures there in you January. <laughs> you pick up the challenge. Good it's job. beautiful out there. There may be a bit of a breeze. <laughs> temperatures right now into the 30s for most of the area. We've had some 40s at times. 23 in West Yellowstone. That's our biggest challenge. They got. Uh, they're dealing with some blowing and drifting snow out in that direction. But most of our snow is going to be out to the west. Today's pretty mild. Temperatures aren't moving a whole lot. We'll be into the low 40s for most of the afternoon. Decent amount of cloud cover. If we see snow, it's going to be very light and most of us aren't even going to see it. We'll talk more about where we stand for snowpack. Much more coming up in about 10 minutes. That's why we call him Matt Segway Elwell. That's it. That's right. And for the first time just now. <laughs> <laughs> 630 here on your Tuesday morning. Thank you for joining us. Our top story for you now in Ravalli County. Yesterday, a man was charged with numerous felonies for the weekend shootings that left law enforcement and residents fearing for their lives. Court documents revealed defendant Tyler Kane Butler had an AR-15 rifle inside his apartment Saturday with additional loaded magazines and ammunition nearby. So Valley Mark County Judge nice. Jennifer Ray told the court she never thought she would have to read about such an incident happening in her jurisdiction. The only positive in it that there was no homicide charges. Court documents say that when police arrived, they were greeted to the sound of multiple gunshots from inside the building. Law enforcement then attempted to contact Butler at his apartment. He proceeded to fire 35 to 45 rounds through the door. According to officials, Butler also told law enforcement he would kill any officer who came in the door. Eventually, Butler did surrender. When officers entered the apartment, found the AR-15 with a bipod facing the front door. The assault rifle was still smoking from repeated use. There were additional loaded magazines next to it. Now, in an interview with police, Butler said he was upset over an argument with his girlfriend. Closer to home now, a pickup truck tumbled into the golf course at the Butte Country Club yesterday after being involved in a two-vehicle crash. Now, the pickup truck smashed through this fence, landed upside down on the cart path at the golf course after it was involved with an accident with an SUV at the intersection of Elizabeth Warren Avenue and White Way. The man driving the pickup was taken to St. James Healthcare by a relative, and the driver suffered minor injuries. Now, the woman that was driving the other vehicle was not reported injured. Police say that the crash does remain under investigation. Staying on topic, the Montana Highway Patrol reports there has been little change in the number of fatal crashes or deaths on the state roads in recent years. Now, preliminary crash data for 2019 shows 167 deadly crashes around Montana during the year, with a total of 185 fatalities. Now, this compared to 182 deaths on the road in 2018 and 186 the year before. Colonel Tom Butler with the Montana Highway Patrol chief said there that there is still troubling number of crashes linked to alcohol and where seatbelts are not being used. We talked about it a moment ago. Yesterday was the final day for public comment on a scoping plan for the Madison River. Now a lot of reviews are already in and let's just say it's a mixed bag. MTN's Cody Boyer spent the day along the Madison River and he has more on that story. On a scale of 1 to 10, the river is definitely a 10 in my heart. It's an issue that longtime Ennis native and Blast and Cast Outfitter owner Todd France says anglers like himself saw coming. I think everybody did. The writing was on the wall a long time ago. The survey covers several different areas of focus, from social conflict and angler activity to commercial use on the river. Yet when France took it, he says it felt more narrow than broad. I just I feel like when I got done completing the survey, that I was given a bunch of not so great answers to come up with a conclusion of of what they wanted. He's not alone. In part of a statement written to the FWP Commission, the board of the Madison Gallatin Chapter of Trout Unlimited says in their opinion, quote, the online questionnaire appears to place FWP, the outfitting community, and the recreational public against one another, end quote. France says while he understands the task that sits before the FWP, it could be done differently. Not that Fish, Wildlife, and Parks doesn't have valuable answers, but um, I think there's also people that are out there that would be more than happy 
to help them out. FWP Region 3 spokesperson Morgan Jacobson says the task isn't simple, yet over 7,000 surveys have been submitted, a promising sign. This is a really good opportunity to provide your insight, your experience. And while the survey won't end in a decision, France knows it's the first stepping stone. And no matter what happens, France's memories of the Madison won't change. I wish everybody was so fortunate enough to be eight years old and the Madison River to be their babysitter. It was a wonderful place and it still is. Now Jacobson says that the Fish, Wildlife and Parks will gather all of the comments and completed surveys and turn them into a proposal, which then the commission will discuss in February before opening the floor for more public input. Well, with the new year comes a new batch of students at Montana State University and a fresh reminder for safety. MSU officials say they have an app for that. Launched last fall, MSU's Safe Cat app puts nine different emergency services all in one place, including campus maps, location services in the event of an emergency situation, a flashlight, and even the ability to send out a message to loved ones that you are okay. The app also allows friends to track their friends' phones as a part of a safety escort program, among many other ways to make sure everyone stays safe. It's absolutely a good feature, especially in a day when almost everyone has a smartphone in their pocket. We wanted to make sure that those resources were convenient and that people could access them all in one place. Now the SafeCat app is available for Android and Apple. Uh, back to this story we talked about at the top of the uh, half hour. The plan to bring a food co-op to Uptown Butte still moving along, but it's taking a little bit longer than they expected. MTN's John Amy has the latest on that deal. Butte still has big plans to start a community-owned grocery store, but it's proving to be a bigger challenge. Now, the more we dig into it, um, the more we realize, wow, there's a lot of issues we didn't, weren't even aware of. The idea to start a cooperative grocery store somewhere in Uptown Butte was first proposed last June. It received support from hundreds of people. So far, the steering committee needs to find a location before it can move forward. It's really going to depend on the location we find and what sort of arrangements uh, we can make in terms of a lease, uh, how much work might need to be done. Officials still need to set up a board of directors for the co-op and try to determine what kind of store it hopes to open in Butte. Do we want to be a, um, a real grocery store for folks or do we want to be more of a sort of a bodega or just a neighborhood grocery store where you stop in and get a few items? Um, or do we want you to fill up your cart? Initial support for a co-op here in Butte was so strong last summer, officials thought they would have one open by this spring. But now they say that goal was too ambitious. It's not going to happen as fast as we originally thought it would, um, but we feel like we're doing our due diligence and that um, the pieces are falling into place. We still got some hard decisions to make. In Butte, John Amy, MTN News. Now the steering committee is seriously looking into a possible location, two possible locations I should say for the co-op and they'll be meeting on that issue next week. Another public hearing is expected to be set next month. Uh, by the way, over the weekend, the Montana Sheriffs and Peace Officers Association held its second fundraising event, collected nearly $26,000 to benefit the family of Gallum County Deputy Jake Almendinger. Almendinger was killed in the line of duty back in October after responding to a call of a stranded motorist up on Ferry Lake Road in the Bridger Mountains. The fundraiser was held on Saturday at Journey Church in Bozeman. They had more than $20,000 in raffle items donated from local businesses and supporters in the community. Now, all of those proceeds from the event went directly to Almendinger's wife and three children. That's fantastic. Yeah. Well done. All of you who donated, thank you. It's a, it's a big deal. And their GoFundMe is rated right about fifty-five, fifty-six thousand dollars So right. still, still making money. Well. Yep, yep, that's right. It is time for a quick break. Thank you so much for joining us here on your Tuesday morning. Coming up, Australia on fire. Thousands of homes lost. Around 450 million animals, 24 lives claimed, and an estimated $480 million in damage. Coming up, weather relief and monetary donations, help from around the world are helping. But first, let's check in with Anthony Mason to see what's coming up at 7 o'clock on CBS This Morning. Good morning. Ahead on CBS This Morning, the U.S. braces for possible retaliation from Iran. 
Hear from Iran's foreign minister who says a response will be direct and proportional. Plus, we talk with military families given just 18 hours before deployments to the Middle East. And we're at CES in Las Vegas. Get a sneak peek at the newest technology, including translation devices and robot puppies. Also, country trio Rascal Flats is in Studio 57 with a big announcement you'll hear only on CBS This Morning. We'll see you at 7.